For the last three and a half weeks, I've been trying to buy back my first car that I ever owned, but the current owners wanted nothing to do with me. I finally convinced the owner's son to meet me in person to discuss selling me the car. I'm really trying to find this car and I'm hoping maybe you can give me some information about it. I mean, honestly, I haven't seen a car in years, man. Uh, I, I really just wanted to come out here and see who was trying to find me or find my dad. I just thought it was kind of weird. Here we are at episode five of the BMW series. This is the final episode and I will give you guys the final update with the private investigator. The original mission since we started this series was to rebuild my dream vision of an M3, but also try and find and purchase back my first BMW 328i. From episode one, we hired a private investigator to try and find and locate my original car. I've been giving you guys small updates here or there throughout the whole entire series, and it's gonna end today in this video. If you have been watching this channel from the very beginning, you should recognize where we are right now. This is the OG parking garage that I've been filming all of my videos at. I've even been bringing my original car here since I first had it. This parking garage, sadly, over the last three to four to five years has been vandalized and abused by the local car community and it is no longer accessible to get to the top and they station cops here 24 seven just because they don't want people going up there and hanging out. We literally got here to film this and we got to the top and there was two cops sitting at the top. Be I'm not gonna with film the, with the cops right there. Be How talking, awkward. be talking with the cops in the background. Uh -huh. We used to come here all the time, and now there's cops there because of you. <laughs> So we're making do with what we got. And I wanted to end this video here because I felt it was symbolic to the message of what this series was to essentially re-tap into my roots because that was kind of the viewpoint from the whole series was building it off of what the 16 year old version of me wanted. So here we are, we've rebuilt this car and you guys are still waiting for what's been happening in the background. While we're here reminiscing on some old spots, I thought it'd be really fun if we could go and try and recreate some of the old photos that I have of this car while it was blue. Cruising through these streets makes me think of all the hot babes I used to pick up in this car. So many of them. There's, oh. there's so many. How many? I couldn't even fit them in the car. The second photo that I want to recreate is in this plaza that's down the street from my house. I'm parked in this spot. Now, of course, the timeline has changed and things look kind of different, but someone's parked there. But I, I'm not, I'm not gonna let this idea fail us because this is all I have for today's video. <laughs> I'm gonna park it in front of this car and we're gonna act like it's not there. And we're gonna, we're gonna reminisce everyone and we're gonna be happy about it. We're gonna accept the photo Why for what it is. Making history right here, baby. This is the shot under the white thing. That turned out terrible. Moving on. The next spot we're going to is in this parking garage that when I actually used to go into this one to take photos, it would always explode my lip because it's like, or you'd like imagine getting like stuck like a teeter totter, like the down, it's very dangerous. So I'm look, I'm very curious to see what happens. But when I used to take all the girls here yeah, in my car and it was how, slammed, it would get stuck all the time. How many girls were in this front seat? Probably 40. Does Calvin count as a little girl? Maybe it's not as bad as I remember it. Oh! Okay, well, I guess times have changed, but could I teeter-totter this car? There it is. So, as I was saying, literally, this would teeter-totter our cars when we came here. It was disgusting and like ghetto when we used to come here, and it looks like it still is. I bet you I can move this. Oh, they like stuffed things behind it. Oh, look at this. I'm a bag baby? I'm gonna get this thing to do some max teetering. Oh, I'm getting traction warning light. Bag, bag, bags for life. Hashtag groceries are for bags for groceries. I guess we don't get in. Oh, it's chained, chained at the bottom. Okay, well, this parking garage is responsible for this photo. Looks like we're not gonna be able to recreate that photo. But one place that I know we can get to is my parents' house, so let's go there. Oh God, oh, oh. Hazards are on. Everyone, backing up. It's like a shitty photo. I'm like here. Wham! 
we've created. Next, now I'm in the driveway. So this one, in the driveway, baby. Sorry, dad. This is where I learned how to angle, baby. Am I scraping? Oh yeah, daddy angles is back. Daddy, daddy angles is here. Oh! Whew. Recreated. This shot is really makes me feel like a professional photographer. On to the next. All right, this exact road, we're down the street from my high school. Let me show you what it was like when I was driving this car in high school. <laughs> I'd be like this. <laughs> nerds! <laughs> that was very accurate. And then I'd give a little of these. <laughs> Yo, what's up, baby? I'll see you in second, I'll see you in second period, And then you should get a scene of me like, <laughs> oh, school's in school. Go back to class, nerd! Oh no, did you do the homework for math? You said I could copy you. Blind blast! I couldn't, get, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> We just dropped a whole bunch of new items on thehuntingcompany.com. We have brand new t-shirts, we have new hybrid shorts, we have garage banners, we have jet tags, we have stickers. We have everything new on the website. So take a moment, click the links down below, and go check it out. This is where Daddy Hunt used to park up. Oh my gosh, I do remember where all your I'd go in like this, park. then I would go left like this. Oh my gosh, I remember. And then you go all the way to the end. I used to park at the back of the parking like lot. TJ. Me and Calvin parked in the same spot. Look, these kids don't even know they anymore. Don't, they don't even know where to, they don't even know where they're parking. They're parking in the non-cool section. What little do they know? Right here, like this. Ready? Yeet! Oh my gosh. This was my parking spot. Now let's go recreate the last photo. A lot has changed since I went to school here. It's like really developed. There was never any of these buildings. There wasn't another school here. A lot has changed. But this photo, this is literally it. On the left was Calvin's BRZ, and then on the right was my BMW. Now, it wasn't blue in this photo, but it, it was black, but I'm still for the purpose and for the memories. I'm gonna Photoshop Calvin's car on the left of that photo. Those trees weren't there. None of that was there, dude. And then we have another one right there, actually, too, but we're not doing that one. <sighs> the memes. So from the beginning of the series, when I reached out to the private investigator, it was pretty rough off the start. I've been giving you guys many updates throughout every single episode, but from the beginning, we never were able to get a hold of the actual owner of the car. The closest we could get was the family members of the owner. We got a hold of, I believe, the ex-wife, and we got a hold of his son. Both of them said they have not seen the owner of the car, which would be their father and the ex-husband for an extended amount of time, but they knew the car that we were talking about, but they made it very apparent that they did not want any part in trying to connect us with the owner of the car. The son actually had a few rough words to exchange with us. After I let the dust settle for a couple days, I reached back out through the private investigator and I offered their son money just to put me in contact with his dad which he actually declined, but he said he was willing to meet me at a location for me to talk to him. He didn't give me his information, he didn't give me his number, but he gave me a location and a time to meet him, so I did. Here's the clip. So I just drove like an hour and a half up to this park location where I'm gonna meet the guy. I don't know his name, I don't know what he looks like, but he knows that I'm in a, my blue BMW. So I'm gonna do my best to try to film something. I don't wanna put the camera in his face, kinda just film the ground. I don't wanna make it too obvious because it's clear he definitely doesn't want to be on camera if he doesn't want to even give me his number just to have a phone call with me. So I'm going to do my best, but I, I, I hope I hope he doesn't see me filming him. Hey man, what's up? My name's CJ. Nice hey, to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. I really appreciate you coming all the way out here. I know it's kind of like a weird thing. I had to like hire someone to, to get a hold of you, but I'm really trying to find this car and I'm hoping maybe you could give me some information about it. I mean, honestly, I haven't seen a car in years, man. Uh, I, I really just wanted to come out here and see who was trying to find me or find my dad. I just thought it was kind of weird. Like you, you haven't seen it like at all in the past 
like I mean, year? no, dude. Like, do you know when the last time you saw it is, or do you know if it's ever gonna like you're gonna be with it again? I'm gonna pay more than what the car's worth just to get it back. My dad. I mean, I don't want to talk about my dad, but it's probably not gonna happen. Okay, I, I get it. it. Sounds like you really need the car. I wish I could help you, but like, it's just my first car, so it'd mean a lot to get it back to me. But I get it. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate you coming out here. Um, thank you for your time, dude. I did my best to film that clip without it being too obvious because it was clear he didn't really want any affiliation. But it's a sad ending. I honestly don't understand. I didn't really want to press him too much on why he wasn't willing to help us out. I, I guess it's just a matter of their private life. It it's just not a good situation. So I've tried my best to respect that as much as I really, really was like, dude, just like, give me the car. Like, it's a depressing and sad ending but that's where the series is gonna come to a close. Building this car throughout the past four episodes has been really nostalgic for me and it's really brought some inspiration back to me because it's allowed me to kind of shift my mind back to eight years ago when my ultimate dream car in life was this car. And to see the cars that we have today, the things that we built today, the life that we've created today, it's a really good reminder for myself that there's really no limit on anything you're trying to accomplish. If you really push forward on something or you're really passionate about something and truly enjoy it, you'll far exceed whatever this like cap you'll put on yourself without even realizing it. And I hope that you guys can get that reminder through this series. We had a blast filming it. We did a completely different filming style, which some of you liked, some of you don't like, but we've just had the best time with this series. And despite the outcome, I'm happy we did it. And I'm excited for all the other projects that we've been working on in the background. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave us your love down below. Hopefully one day they come back and I get to make a video and I'm like, dude, they reached out to me. Let's go pick up this car because I really want to revive it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, peace out and keep moving.